everyone, it's Natasha from Makeup and SFC. Welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to do a kind of get ready with me recreation of my Gen Beauty SF Day 1 look. A lot of people really, really liked it and so my bestie Stacy requested a tutorial on this look and so I thought I would oblige. Now, if you're just interested in the eye look, I will timestamp it right here so that you can go straight to that. If you're interested in me chatting away and showing you the look from beginning to end then go ahead and sit with me because that's what I'm about to do because I feel like just playing with my makeup so yes so if you're interested in my vlog I will link that up here I created a vlog about my gen beauty experience and I wanted to show you all my friends that came to visit um, so that should be up either before or after this video I also have a haul that I will be filming or will have filmed and again if I have it already I will link it up here or down below and you can check that out. Gen Beauty and Ipsy are just so generous when it comes to the swag bag and the things that you get at the event itself. If you've never done Gen Beauty it's something I highly recommend. I'm really glad that they brought it to the Bay Area because I think they now take us Bay Areans, Bay Areans? Bay Area residents <laughs> seriously when it comes to beauty so yes so let's get started i just came from work i have no makeup on so we are starting from the beginning so pretty much everything is about the same except for the prep step so i'm going to be using my revival labs uh, rose water you guys know i use this often i'm going to be using my cover fx mattifying primer i use this all the time And the great thing about that primer, it has an acne treatment, so when I am applying it, I'm also applying an acne treatment in case that you have some oncoming friends coming along. Don't be YouTube friends with YouTube people because then you always want to try new stuff. So I just got this. This is the Dr. Brandt Pores No More um, primer. I tried this for the first time when I did my challenges with Maddie from the Ipsy OS Studio, so I will link those videos down below or up top. And I tried it and I liked it, but I really used it this weekend and I was mad because I liked it even more. So I decided to get this during the VIB sale. So I got it 20% off and it's just awesome. Like I, I hate to say it, but I think it might replace my e.l.f. one. Like the e.l.f. one is a really good alternative if you're on a budget. And I'm going to pat that into the skin just like I do my e.l.f. primer. So I'm going to skip the foundation part now because that's really the only step that has been different. If you're interested in my foundation routine, I will go ahead and link that here or up there, down there, you know where. And you can go ahead and see how I do that. But for now, so that is the foundation done. Now, I'm pretty much like baking under my eyes right now, but I'm going to set the rest of my face. And I'm using the Maybelline Shine Free Powder that I always use. To contour, I'm going to be using Benefit Hoola. I haven't used this in a minute, but I did enjoy it that day because I didn't want to wear blush. I was trying to go for this retro look, so I'm just taking a little bit of this shade right here. And it's like a cool tone shade. I'm just taking that under my cheekbones and on my jawline and my forehead. Now I'm going to take a little bit of that face powder. And I'm going to use that just to clean up my contour. Just like that. This is if you get a little too excited. And you just want to clean it up. My sponge is wet from before. And this just makes the bottom edge just a little bit more cleaner. And then you dust it away. So I don't keep it on for too long. I have done one eye off camera. I'm going to show you the other eye. So I primarily used matte shadows on my eyes and I used the Matrimony palette from The Balm. And The Balm is based in San Francisco. And so I thought it would be a great one to use for um, Gen Beauty because they were one of the headlining brands there. So I've already primed my eyelids with my Wet n Wild eyeshadow primer and my NYX concealer in a jar. So that is used to highlight under my brows. So matte Lynn, I'm taking on my brow bone. I'm just going to take this little Eco Tools brush and I'm going to go right into that shade. And I'm going to set my brow bone. It is kind of a skin tone base. So 
it's nice to set it with an eyeshadow that is similar. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this shade called Matte Lopez, and that is this tannish shade right here on a beige cosmetics crease brush. And I'm going to use that to start to define the crease. And I'm going in circular motions and then going back and forth. So it's up to you how much you want to put on, but I put a lot. And I'm pretty much just setting up the base for my blending eyeshadow because I am going to go with a little bit of a um, burgundy and purple shade in the lower crease. So what this shade does is it just sets you up so that it has powder to adhere to. So when you start to blend later on, it's not clinging on to that creamy base that you had put prior. So now to define the crease even further, I'm going to go in with Matte Kumar, which is a beautiful burgundy shade. And I'm taking that on this really tiny uh, Morphe brush. And I'm gonna concentrate that right in my crease, which is a little lower. So I'm not going past that tan shade that I had done earlier, but I'm gonna start to fluff it right where my eye folds. So first I placed it, and then now I'm starting to buff out the edges. So I'm really staying low in that crease. Going from inner all the way to outer corner. And at first it's going to look crazy, but we are going to get there. Going back with the original brush, we are going to start to buff out the edges. And then if you need a little bit more, you can get more of that tan shade. And then start to concentrate that again on the outer edges. From inner to outer corner. Then taking, oh, hello. Then taking the same brush, I'm going to take this purpley shade and it's called Matte Mos Mosquits? Mosquits. Mosquits. I'm watching the arrow right now and he's like in Russia. So I'm taking the tiny, tiniest bit. I'm going to concentrate that on the outer corner. And as you can see, I'm holding the brush at the end because it's applying the lightest pressure. So I'm applying that right at the outer corner. Concentrating the most color out there and then whatever's left, I'm gonna to start to bring in, not covering the pink, but kind of like overlapping it. So I'm like right on my crease, even over my eyelid, if that makes sense, because you're creating a gradient on your crease. So we went from lightest to darkest, light being matte Lopez, medium shade being matte Kumar, and then matte Moskowitz is in the deepest part of my crease. So it's up to you how much you want to build that up. I think that looks good. It was daytime, so I kind of kept it a little bit lighter. Lighter. All right. Now that that's about done, another final blending on the outer edge. Just like that. Fluff it all out. I'm going to take the Sigma E60. It's a flat shader brush, and I'm going into Matte Rossi right there. It is a cool tone taupe, which is kind of odd, and I don't know if it's because I used it over another eyeshadow. I think I used Matte Lynn on this brush right before, but it creates this really strange matte color on the lid. But I'm using that to sort of like cut the crease a little bit. So it's almost like a taupe gray. So it's not typically something that I would use on the lid, but something that day made me feel it and I was into it. So I put that all over the lid when I'm opening my eye like this, it really shows where my crease fold is. And so I'm keeping the brush right there. I know it's strange, but bear with me. And I'm going to go back in with the purpley shade and uh, right there. And then I started to define the outer corner a little bit more. And there you have it. Usually when I'm doing my eyeliner, I'm doing one eye, looking at the other eye, and then I kind of like match it up together. But because I did one eye off camera, now I'm gonna have to like match it to this one the best that I can. 
First, I'm gonna brush off the bake that's under my eye right now. Now that I've done the top portion of my eye, I don't really need that there to catch any fallout. But to tell you the truth, those bomb palettes don't have much fallout. So I'm taking my Giordana Fabi Liner and I'm going to start the basis of my liner. And so I start with my outer corner, it's up to you what you wanna do. But I start with a little flick, starting from the bottom line of my lash line, my upper lash line, and then I just kind of flick upward and attach it. Now it's up to you how long you wanna go. This is gonna be pretty long because I am wearing false lashes today, but we're gonna work with that. Then from the inner corner, I try to make it as thin as possible. So I like using this felt pen because it's a little bit stiffer. I'm trying to taper it as much as I can from the inner corner, I'm trying not to make it too fat. And then I just kind of go for it. <laughs> so there I've made the top line and then I connect it. Not all the way to the outer corner, but like right before so that it tapers to a fine tip at the end. Like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the Balm Schwing Liner and I'm going to use that to fill in the line. And what this does is it makes it black, it makes it inky, and it just, it's easier to fill in with a liquid for me. That ain't bad. I'm going to be using my CoverGirl Supersizer Mascara just to touch the ends of my lashes. I'm going to be using this itty bitty NYX Slide On Glide On Pencil to touch the bottom base of my um, inner rims and my lower lash line. Bottom. I'm going to be using this Giordana Easy Liner for Eyes in Divine Blue and I'm going to touch that on my lower lash line. Not my waterline because I put the black, but I'm going to touch this on the base of my lashes um, because I just felt like I wanted a touch of blue. And then to set that, I'm going to be using this blue shade from 35C palette on this little e.l.f. brush. I'm going to start to use that to buff the lower lash line. Now for my inner corner, I'm taking the Balm Mary Luminizer. And I'm taking this little elf brush. It is a crease brush. I'm gonna use that right on the inner corner to brighten everything up because everything so far has been matte. So I'm gonna set my face with the L'Oreal Pro Matte Spray. Just like that. And then I'm going to highlight with the same Mary Luminizer that I used on my uh, inner corners. So now my lash should be ready. I'm just gonna pop those on. What I like to do is I like to start in the center. This little tool is awesome. Um, if you don't like to apply them with your fingers, this is a really great way to just like place them. So I do the outer corner and then the inner corner. And then taking the same tool, you just sort of press and bind your lashes together. And voila. And then I just kind of like perk them up a little bit so they're up and not down. So the last part of this makeup look, which is super easy, is my lips. And I use the shade Royal from Nude Sticks. These pencils are awesome. So if in case you bring these on the go, it comes with a little sharpener in the cap. And so when you are running low, you just use it like so. And you can be as perfect or imperfect as you want. I went for that sort of like perfect retro look. Like 
That is the finished look. I hope that you enjoyed my Gen Beauty makeup and you found some things that you wanted to try. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.